So you want to improve your shot calling. Do you find yourself the only person on your team with a voice who's willing to speak up, but feel as if sometimes you're making bad choices and having bad leadership generally gets your team killed? Well, worry about that no more. In this video, we're going to cover exactly what you should be doing as a shot caller or leader in your team to make sure you're winning more games and, of course, just being a better leader in general. So if you do enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button below and consider subscribing. I'm Shadow Drain. Let's get right on with it so we are going to start with know your team's identity now your team's identity will change with each individual that's in the team so even if you just swap out one person in quads your team identity is different now the first thing that you can do here it, this is this is basically preparation know what your team's identity is is it a camping team is it a pushing team is it a kill heavy team is it a camp heavy team once you know that you can base your decisions in game around that don't just play how you want to play play how the team plays at their best so i'll give you an example in this so if i'm running a team with rue and ginger fox i know this team is going to be aggressive not hyper aggressive but aggressive picking up bounties and shooting on site whereas if i go for a team that's wired more uav turner and and sandbag the team's going to be a bit slower, it's not going to be as aggressive, and it's going to be looking to hide in the hills and buildings more so than actually pushing and being aggressive. Now that's fine, just know the team, and that way you can make the decisions around it, which suits everyone in the team. Remember, being a leader is not about you, it's about getting the most out of those around you. Now, this is just something that you need to bear in mind, and once you know the team identity, this is your theme in, in Warzone. This is, this is how you're going to be playing your games in Warzone. Do it around people's identity of the team. And also having, you know, you can have you can have objectives there as well. If you've got a camping team, but the sailor they want to play aggressive, do it. <laughs> Second thing on the list is going to be trust your teammates. Now, I'm going to provide an example here. So here we're going to show you a little example of what I mean by trust your teammates and don't micromanage. Uh, here you can see that we have got three people here. It's very hard to see. Gold, green and purple. And then you've got uh, blue there, which is Rue. Now, in this kind of situation, we've got to basically assess the danger. Uh, there is a team over there and the Rue is stuck between there and zone. This guy's going to be jumping in, likely going for a low drop over here. So the call it should be to call him back. Get him in here and we'll attack them all as a four. However, looking at all the open ground that he's got to cover, it is just best to trust him in this particular situation and just let him crack on with it. And sure enough, that is what happens. So nothing really gets mentioned. But when we do scroll on, you can see that Rue is now 204 meters away, also still alive. Uh, and with constant communication, we are, you see loads of different pings going on here. We are talking who is where and what's best out to do. Now, we have got Rue here, as mentioned before. Now, instead of calling them back in, telling them to come back, what you can do is just use this to your advantage. So, you have a completely different angle here. So, what we end up doing is playing that to our advantage. Now, we will keep on shooting at them. Uh, so, they'll keep on looking at us. And then, once they're preoccupied with us, Rue will start shooting at them. When Rue starts getting under heat, I'll start shooting at them again. Um, so, it's really, really, really good and well thought out really in terms of this uh, strategy so yeah this is just me scrubbing through the footage here but yeah usually in any other particular situation Rue being 241 meters away I would usually deem as completely unacceptable <laughs> really um, however we're making it work to our advantage and we're not micromanaging trust your teammates to do what needs to be done so yeah uh, we also go on from this position to win the game as well so that's all very good so let's move on to the next point so as briefly mentioned in the last example the next tip is going to be don't micromanage remember people are individuals they're going to have their own styles of play and you've got to appreciate that you might not understand their style of play but just have faith in it hence trust your teammates now when i say micromanage i mean don't be telling people to be in an exact position don't tell people to be to, a, to attack from a certain angle it, it, it's it's not a chessboard you do not have control of or where everyone goes your job is to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing not where necessarily where to be in a certain fight so if you're telling someone to be at a certain tree no good if you're telling someone to be in a general area that's better so for example uh, ginger fox can you hold the, the top of the the top of the hill 
Rue, can you cover that building? Not Rue, get in this building at this window. So just try not to micromanage yourselves there uh, and things will be a lot more easy. You're also going to find that your team's going to be a lot more cooperative with you as well if you let them make their own decisions and you're not dictating everything that you do in Warzone. So don't be a control freak. <laughs> Have faith in your team and your team will reward you with some wins. It doesn't matter if you're the best player on the team mechanically or the worst player on the team mechanically. If, if you give people... A, scope to actually do what they need to do you're going to be absolutely fine so yeah just avoid micromanagement at all times next is going to be favor high ground and cover when rotating now if you say you're at the river and you you want to be let's just say you want to go to the dam don't run straight up the river to the dam that you're just going to get killed from every single angle there's no point either run along there via the via the police station on the right or go there via the airport on the left or storage town and up the hills uh, on the far west of the map just avoid going through open areas as often as possible there's no point in making yourself open unless you absolutely have to and this is going to basically go on to the next point as well which is constantly evaluate risk or reward this is probably one of the most important skills that you're going to learn when you want to be a good shot caller leader in warzone this is basically, it's, it's just down to assessment. If you are if you know where you need to be and you've got two or three different routes to get there, evaluate the risk to, the risk to reward, I can't get words out, the risk to reward ratio. Now this is important because if you are going to take a massively high risk for what's essentially going to be low ground in the open, what's the point in doing that? If you, uh, I know it's an extreme example, but if you can get to high ground where there's plenty of cover in like the middle of circle where it's like you're going to finish and there's not going to be any risk in getting there absolutely do that that should be the play y you know what i mean not saying always go for the high ground necessarily but make sure that you always evaluate the risk and reward if you've got two paths to an objective then you need to choose you need to get decide which one has the highest risk reward don't always go for the one that's the least risky don't get me wrong that's where the reward aspect comes in so if you've got two risky if it's if it's going to be risky either way then go for the path which yields the most benefits this is the, how you get value out of your team this is how you get value out of your rotations and this is how you get value just out of movement in general always evaluate risk and reward if you don't know what to do give your teammates the option say to them and this is what i do regularly say to them right our two options are this and this these are the pros and cons of both what do you want to do Quite often enough, you'll not get an answer, but what you'll notice if you look on the minimap is that people will just start drifting to, to, to what they want to do, and then just go with it. Go from it from there, because some of them might not speak up, but they might actually start walking in the direction that they want to go. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind. The next thing that I want you all to do as well when you are leading your team is have a goal. Now, having a goal is important because it helps you to keep focused. If your team hasn't got a focus, hasn't got an objective, your team's wandering and they are extremely vulnerable to getting picked off by a sniper or a camper or whatever. If they have a goal, they're alert, they're ready for anything. And usually if a camper tries to catch them out, they're ready for it. If, if a sniper's trying to line them up, they're not caught off guard. They usually see it and are able to react to it before they get hit, especially at further ranges. So always have a goal and keep focused. Now that goal can be anything you want. It can be to move to a certain objective. It can be a contract. It can even be hold an objective. If, I mean, I don't endorse this, but some teams out there do. So if you've got a camping team, uh, camp this objective or camp this rooftop until we have to move. If that's the objective, so be it. I would rather have, you know, a, a proper objective. Like, let's push this team here, push this team, take their position, kill a few people, and then move on. That is an objective. Go for an objective. If you don't have an objective, you are going to get punished. So these are the seven uh, quite basic tips just to keep yourself going in Warzone. Just to basically, that's six tips, I can't count. Just to, you know, just to help sharpen up. Once you've actually got these skills down, you're going to find that your leadership qualities improve drastically and you're going to start getting to later circles. You won't at first pick up more wins, but the more experience you get getting yourself into final circles with this leadership strategy, the more often and the more experience you'll get actually winning them and knowing what to do in certain situations going forward. So yeah, that's going to wrap up this little leadership series, guys. Uh, the next video like this that I'll make will be how to make better decisions in Warzone. 
So yeah, this is the leadership one and make the better decisions one it will be coming sometime next week or the week after. But yes, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button below and consider subscribing and let me know what you think in the comment section below too. Until then, I'm Shadow Rain, you're awesome, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.